now, you need to get in here with the camera. Because this is going to be the last time. Oh, wait. Roll the carriage back. Get all this crap out of your way. All right, now. You need to be down by the chuck. So this, you have to decide how much you're going to leave in there because you, can, you need enough to get hold of it, but yet you don't want to stick too much of it in because you need every bit you can get. And that's about where I normally grab it right there. And tighten this back up. Run your hand wheel in and lock it down. Now here we go. We're going to take this next cut. And you realize some of this, you could take this in the second, this next process we're going to do. Whoop, not in gear. Okay. But it would be too much, too heavy of a cut. All right. So now, make sure your X is still zero. That's important. All right. And so, what we're assuming here is that we're assuming that from where we started to cut at 0 0.720, the whole way to here is 0 0.720. But what you're going to find out is, because it's a piece of plastic, because there's deflection, because of the system we're using to cut it, it's not going to be 720 uniform the whole way across. There's going to be some high spots and there's going to be some low spots. And we will address that in a minute. But before we do that, the next thing we have to do is we have to do our step down piece, right? So we've gone from, started out at 875, we have a body of 7, 720, 719.5, and we have the step down, the part that goes into the chamber at 465. Now, just stay here for a second. So why and how do we decide what that's going to be? Again, this measures 465. Well, this is a piece of 65 Creedmoor brass, and if you measure it, 465. And if anything, you actually want this to be a hair under, right? So that it'll actually slip in there. And then we're actually running right at about 0 0.4645. So this is a pretty good one for, again, working in plastic. So we're going to go from, hold on a second. We're assuming that the body right now is 0 0.720. So I'm just going to type that in. So 720 minus 465, and let's make it 466. And actually, it's funny because you don't, I don't realize, I don't think about it, the body on these is actually just a hair bigger. So let's, let's subtract 468. 720 minus 468 equals 252. All right, now let's do that again and make sure. So we're at 720 on the body, minus 469, 251. So that's a really good idea to double check, by the way, because you'll end up messing up. Now, for the length, Believe it or not, this is how I do it. I've been making these so many, I just use the one that I've made before as the pattern. In other words, I don't actually have a set number how far to go. I guess I did probably on the very first one I ever made, but I can't even remember how long ago that was. So what I do is I run this down till it seems to be right about in the same spot. And again, you realize it's just plastic. It's a bore guide. If we're off a thou here, it won't be the end of the world. But I'm going to run it right down about to there. And we need to go in 251. So that's as we come up on our zero. Right? So watch and see if the tool touches right when we get to zero. And indeed it did. So that's our zero. I need to go 251. I'm not going to take all 251 in one pass too much. I think I'll take I'll take the 51 and then I'll have 200 remaining. Oh crap. I didn't set my Z. 
which I really should have, but I'll be able to see it. set where it is. I'm going to run it back so it touches that shoulder because I did not, and I can actually see the cut. I didn't zero my z-axis. I'll go right till I touch it and I'll zero my z-axis to give me a point of reference. So we went, we took 51 on that. Let's go ahead and take There were at 100 total. Supposed to go to an in cut of 251. Well, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to reach up here and I'm going to zero, right? That way I can pull out of here and I can go in and I can actually measure it and see where we really are. Because remember, we're working with plastic and it's not going to be precise. And we know we want to end up at we want to end up at say 460, 468, 469. So. Right now, we are at 526. So we have 526 minus 469. And we have 57 thou remaining to go. And again, I don't know if I'll take that all in one pass. Back to your established zero. Okay. I'm gonna run it up against our Z zero. So we're zeroed on both axes now. And I'm going to run it in, we need 57. I'm gonna run it in, oh, I don't know. I think I'll take, uh, I'll take 30. I'll take 37 on the first pass. And that, that and in the end part we're building right now, I guess we'll call that the stinger. The part that goes down into the chamber. Obviously that's way longer than we need to be for a 6.5 Creedmoor cartridge. But we're going to go ahead and make it anyways and then we'll cut it off later. That would be long enough right there for like... 264 wind mag or 280 Ackley or something like that, a long skinny cartridge. All right, now we're at 37. I'm going to zero again, okay? Because this next pass will probably be the last one, and I would like it to be right. So measure twice, cut once. All right, so we're going to go in and measure it again. We are right at 490. Minus. Hmm. 
469, I should be able to remember that, equals 21. So it was dead on. 21 thou on this last pass. So I'll do the same thing. I'm going to keep off of my Z axis. I'm going to go in 21 thou below my established zero, deeper. And there I am. Okay, I'm going to zero it. That's important for later. And I'm going to run it back to the right to my established Z zero. You can hear it touch it. Okay? Now, I'm going to let it go. so I can pull back out of there, get everything out of the way, and go back in and measure. Let's see where we're actually at. And again, I'm only double checking everything here because I'm doing this for the camera. So 460, what we'd like is, if this is actually 468.5, so we would like this to be at 468 because it needs to be a little bit undersized. 0 0.4675, woohoo! Okay, that's pretty good. Now got to realize there's a taper, right? So at the base of this case, we're at 468.5. And at the shoulder of this case, we're at 460. Let's do that again, be sure. So we'll call that 9. 469, 460. So you realize that is only 9 thou taper over the length of the case. That's like a really small amount. Most cases have way more taper than that. And it's kind of one of the reasons why this is a pretty cool little case. I mean, I don't, I'm not in love with 6.5 Creedmoor, but 6 Creedmoor I am with 105s. But anyways, it's a pretty darn good, pretty well designed case. It is not, in my opinion, an elk cartridge. Deer, antelope, goats, sheep, yeah, 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 all that crap. There's guys shooting elk with this. Not me. All right, so what we want to do now is we want to take 9 thou taper out of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back in here and we're going to go to our Z because we're going to start right at our Z axis, our Z zero, excuse me. Run in there to that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in until this touches. I'm going to do it with the lathe on. And if I shave off just a little wee bit, if anything, that will give us a hair more clearance. So what I'm going to do is Run in here. Okay, so we're going to be back at our X zero right there. And I'm going to take just a little wee bit so it's a fresh cut, two ten thousandths. Now, what I'm going to do is, you need to maybe be looking at this, I'm going to, I'm going to let the carriage automatically advance to the left. And while it's automatically advancing to the left, I'm going to take the in-feed and I'm going to run it in. So what's going to be happening is the carriage is going to be going this way and the tool is going to be going in this way. And it's a really, really easy way just to cut a rough taper. Believe it or not, it usually comes out pretty good. So here we go. You need to get over here so you can see this. And by the way, you're going to have to watch your DRO to get this right. So I'm going to, I'm going to flip in the, the carriage to the left. And at the same time, I'm going to start feeding the tool into it to create a taper. So here we go. Now remember, we only need nine total over the length of what the case would be. And I will actually go a little bit below that, smaller than that, as we progress down past where the shoulder of the case would be. Again, we know we're not going to use all that stinger, all that tip. So far, I've run in 12 total. And I would say we're, we're beyond the length of the sh shoulder now on the case. So I can go ahead and run it in a little bit more. I'll run it into about 15, and then I'll just let it cut straight. So no more taper. We're not going to be using that part of what we just did, so it didn't really matter. Just looks better. All right, so get your strings and your chips out of here. And now 
We have the resemblance of a bore guide, but we do not have a bore guide yet because we don't have a hole for it. And in fact, there's actually multiple things that we have to do yet. So take your tool out of there, pull your cross slide and your compound back. In fact, I'm going to take my tool post off easier so you can see this. Okay, pull everything back. Get this out of the way. Now, here's the deal. Whoop. Didn't take it out of gear. All right, so what we're going to do now is, first you realize, obviously, we started with a solid piece of piece of plastic, piece of a saddle, but we did center drill it. So you got that center drill way down in there, right? So I'm going to put this in the chuck and I'm going to slide it right down there against the shoulder. The part that you grab to pull it back out of the of the receiver. I'm going to lock that down, right? Okay, now I need to get my live center out. Which is sometimes easier said than done. Key. Well, of course, it's going to be difficult tonight. Just realize this is just a soft dead blow hammer. I like just to tap that, get that to go in there a little bit. Now, this is 6.5 Creed mower. I have multiple ones of these, but you got to realize you can't run every one for every size. I mean, you'd have to, these are expensive. You'd have to have a zillion of them. So this one measures 313, going down to 264 bore. In other words, to get your brush and stuff through. I have bigger ones, I have smaller ones. This is the one I generally use. This is a parabolic drill, it self-centers. Works pretty good. Pretty expensive. All right. Now, again, I've tried this. I've tried this as slow as 45 RPMs, and I've tried it as high as 900 RPMs. And you know what? I haven't found any of it that works great. I'd like to have a perfectly smooth finish inside there, but I don't even know if that's possible. And, and I've run them wet, and I've run them dry, and it doesn't seem to matter. So generally, I run it, uh, we'll run it right at about 255, somewhere in there. Okay. And I'm going to run it dry. You just don't want it to go too fast. You got to watch, look right here. You got to watch that you don't run your tailstock beyond its ability to draw itself back in. So once I get out there, then I pull it back. Get these chips out of here. And then I advance the entire tail stop. Bump it up, take another cut. Again, it's really easy to stop that squeaking, it just makes a mess. Like I said, I haven't noticed though that it really makes a nicer cut by running it wet. Although, I run all my metal wet. Everything we do in this shop is run wet, except for plastic. All right, you need to get back, you're gonna get oil all over that camera. 
That's the problem with wet. Everything's wet, including you. Okay, now, you notice I did not drill the whole way through. And years ago, when I first started doing this, sometimes I would drill the whole way through. This, this drill bit will reach just barely. But it didn't always come out dead center. And even this is no, what we're about to do is no guarantee. By the way, see, I can see through the light. It's cut it down to there. So we're within two or three inches of actually being lined up. But you remember, I center drilled it on both ends. And the reason I did that is, like I was saying, I used to just try to drill the whole way through, and it never come like out the side or anything, but sometimes it wouldn't be actually in the true center. And I just didn't like that. So I've noticed that if I go in from this end also, it's almost always dead center. You have to be careful right here when you start though, because it'll try to grab that. There, I'm through. Okay? All right, so we have a bore guide, sort of. Okay, it's been, what time did we start? It's been an hour and 25 minutes. No, we started at 8.30. Oh, Wasn't okay. it 8.30? It says on the camera. Actually, the an bathroom. hour and five minutes. Okay, an hour and five minutes. So we, we have a roughed out board guide, okay? We're not there yet. So here's the next thing we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to cut this off. And I'm going to do it the fast and easy way. Obviously, you can use a parting tool for this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the case right here. And I'm going to get it lined up about to where I need to be. And actually, let me think about that. If I, I need to go about there. Let me see my other board guide. Okay, we know that one goes in. So let's cut it there. Again, like I said, you could use a parting tool for this. But we're going to do something to the end of that anyways. So, there we are. Now, what we need to see is we know... We know this one fits. And it hits just like that, and that's what you got, right? So what we want to see is, will this fit? And obviously, see, it doesn't want to go. All right, so... This one... Where it enters measures exactly 720. This one measures 722, right? Now, as we go up through here and check our measurements, 722, there's actually a 719 and a half, 720, 721, 722, there's actually a 723 right there, 20. So it's varying 3,000, right? And so what we need to do is we need to find the high spots and take them off while leaving the low spots alone, right? So I, can, I could force that in there, but I don't want to. So we know that it's high right here, right? So this is the easiest way. And actually, it, it, if anything, it improves the finish. I used to try to machine it to get it where I needed to be, excuse me. But there's no reason to do that. Believe it or not, a pile. Let's spin this up a little bit. Okay, a file works really nice. I'm doing knocking off where I already know the high spot is. And you know what else? While I'm here, I might as well go ahead and do this. I like to shape this end so that it goes up into the chamber nicer. Okay. Now, 
Ben. All right, let's see what we got. Okay. All right, so see, we're started in now. A little bit tight right there. I mean, I can, I can shove it through there, but probably never get it back out. Okay, so we, you see there's marks on it. I don't know if you can see that. Marks where it's rubbing. I've done this with sandpaper also. But even if you go the whole way down to 2,000 grit sandpaper, it doesn't make as nice, a, as nice of a finish on it as it does with a regular old file. Great. I've never read it. Okay? So just the high spots. Okay, so battery died there for a second, but I kept working because we want to see how long it actually takes because I've never really, really timed this. So I, I kept on going with my file and I've got it now. See where it drops through in the front too. So here's the, here's the way it is. And this is, this is the way I like it. So it'll go right like that. And then that last little bit. So it's, you know, you can see the mark, it's still rubbing. Right? So just if you happen to be the person who gets this one, don't leave it laying in a 100 degree blazing hot sun because it'll swell up and it don't, won't go. But I like them to fit right. And the only way to have it work if it's hot is to build slop in it. And I don't like slop. Okay, so there we are. Now you think, okay, great, we got a bore guide, right? And it fits and everything's done. No, it's not done. Here's why it's not done. You can't push your patches down in there with a square edge on that. Right? And a lot of guys that do make them, and there ain't very many, but the guys that do, they never, never put a bevel on that. So what you want to do is, you want to put this back in here, chuck it up right up against, okay? Turn your compound to a 45, and in fact, it wouldn't matter, but that's what we're going to do. I, I usually do them at 45. Okay, lock it down, Get all this stuff out of the way. Put your tool post back on. Okay, run it in. And I should have got that drill bit out of the way. That's not good safety practice. In fact, you know what? Rather than saying it, I should do it. Stuff like this is what causes accidents. So get that the heck out of there. Okay, now we need a tool. So, angled boring bar, right? Okay, run that in, run that in. Okay, you need to be over here where you can see the tool. Okay, you're gonna take the edge off of that, right? So set that up. Lock your tool post down, lock that down. And it doesn't matter, we're gonna run fast, 585. All we're doing is putting a bevel on. So right, advance your carriage. And see, you'll start to take a chip out of there. And I'm taking them going both ways. You wanna take the last one going easy so it's nice and smooth cut. All right? Pull it. I'm gonna reach in there and get that chip out. Be careful when you do stuff like that. Okay, a little bit further. Okay, advance it, and then this time, bring it out slow. And in fact, I might, might take one more, just a little bit. Run it back in. Okay, advance it. Bring it out nice and slow so you get a smooth cut. All the patches that you use will be going over that, down into that bevel. And so you want that nice and smooth. Nice and 
nice smooth cut. Okay, bring it up. Then, this is a requirement. Anytime you do machine work, then you take it out and you look at it and you say, ooh, that's nice. I really like that. You have to do that, otherwise you'll go crazy. Okay, so, come over here to the gun. Because this is actually, that's going to be the bore guide for this gun. That's not the dingbat and switch the bolts. Although, supposedly with bats you can switch the bolts, but that ain't me, babe. All right, see how this is? And you realize this is Duracoated, so this one's just a hair tight. But as you use it, I mean, ooh, that's nice. It's actually a hair too tight. <laughs> I might actually take a little bit more off of that, but you know what? For now, we have to quit because I want you to look at the look at the clock. Like I said, we never quit working, even when she switched the battery. So however long that is, that's how long it is. And I mean, it's just a stinking bore guide, but it's important, and that's why I make one for every gun. Um, and it's important that they fit good. You realize, though, it reaches that far down in. So, I mean, the cleaning rod goes through. You're way down. Look. I mean, you're whole way down to the mouth of the case. It's completely protected. So, when the brush or the patch goes, goes into the lead, I mean, everything's protected. It's really nice. Really, really nice. Now, while we're here... By the way, these will give you girly hands if you wear these enough. Um, while we're here, people have been asking about my hat. Oh wait, right, this is my Idaho hair piece. Right, you actually, I actually have a totally awesome head of hair. No, okay, so you just wear the hat all the time. Anyways, people ask us about our hats. And everybody that buys a gun off of us gets a hat and a t-shirt and stickers and all that kind of stuff. It just goes with the gun, that's part of what we do. But people have been asking about them and they want to buy them. Matter of fact, we go over there and turn that roto phase off. Show them the roto phase, by the way. Okay, so if you wonder partly why I'm deaf, and yes, when I'm in here by myself, I wear earplugs. But that roto phase, this is three phase equipment. It supplies the third leg, and so if we ever get over to where we think we're going, there's actually three phase power there, so I can do away with that. And It'd be great if we had another room to put that motor in, because that pitch, it really gets to you, even with earplugs. But it works good, and like I said, this is all three-phase equipment. Now, I may talk about that in a minute, but we were talking about hats, right? So these are really nice hats, at least I think they are. We give them to every customer. But people have been asking about hats. Well, will we sell hats? Well, okay, we're not in the business of selling hats, but here's what we're going to do. Whatever the hat costs us, and I don't exactly know, how, how much? They're 15. They're 15 bucks, she said. So does that, and then add $1 onto that? Yes. So what we're gonna do is, is for our hats, our t-shirts, our stickers, whatever, we're gonna add $1, honestly. We're gonna add $1 over the cost, plus wherever it's going, you have to pay shipping. Because there's no way on earth we're gonna ship a hat to Australia for $1. Okay, and really all the dollar for is to cover our time. Right, and probably we'll wait till what people want two, three, four of them, and then we'll take an hour and pack them up and ship them out. But but whatever it's going to be, it's the actual cost, whatever it costs us, plus a dollar. So we have these hats, and they're darn nice hats. Sometimes they're they're, I mean, just awesome. You know, you realize you got to get them get them embroidered, and they're different. And then we have stickers. These are pretty heavy duty stickers, and they're pretty nice stickers. So if you want to stick a sticker on your gun safe or whatever. Same deal, whatever it costs us, plus a dollar. And then we have t-shirts. Same deal, these are pretty nice, heavy duty t-shirts. So, it says quarter minute magnums on the front, and then on the back. This is what we've been, ever. this has been our logo really ever since the beginning, the proof is on the target, because hey, it either shoots or it doesn't, right? And these shoot, and I guarantee these to shoot. So, we're gonna start offering hats, stickers, t-shirts, right? Not to make money, just because people say they want them. And like I said, we're going to charge that dollar, one dollar over and above, just for our time packing them up, shipping them out. Um, now, while I'm here, and this, the video is getting pretty darn long, I wanted to talk about this lathe. 
Um, you notice earlier I said this light gets very hot. It's a halogen light. It's really good and bright. But I've had this lathe, I think, for 13 years. One of the reoccurring problems with this lathe has been this light. It gets so hot, it melts the... It, it, first of all, the bulbs burn up. That's no big deal. But it melts the housing. It melts the wire. You would not want to leave the shop and leave this on because you might come back to a pile of ashes. Okay? So it, it, what we have to do is we have to replace the entire assembly. I bet you we've replaced it four or five times maybe. And I'm asking my wife. Four or five times I'd say we've replaced that. The next issue that I've had with this lathe is the coolant pump. The coolant pump's down here and there's a big reservoir down in here. It's hard as heck to get to it. The way it came is that it's just a little wee access door and the pump that came in it, the original manufacturer's pump, barely goes in that hole. Well, we replaced the pump and we replaced the pump and we replaced the pump. Same deal. I don't know how many pumps. I'll bet you at least four. Finally, I got really sick of replacing pumps. So I think the one is called a gray bill, I believe. It's an aftermarket pump, quite a bit more money. Wow, I had to sit on my butt down behind there with a sawzall. This casting is heavy. This lathe weighs over 3,000 pounds, and I had no room to work, and, and I didn't want to move it, because once you're set up, I mean, I've had really good luck with this lathe sitting exactly where it is, so I didn't want to move it, so I had to sit back there. I sat back there for like, what, two days, cutting with a sawzall, just going through blade after blade, because that housing is cast, and there's a ton of sand in it. So it's basically like cutting rocks, Right? So I just went through blade after blade after blade. Finally, I got the hole 50% bigger than it was, and I could get that gray bill pump to go in there. Okay, that's pretty much solved the pump issue. But then, and, and I can't show you without going around the back of this, the wiring in this, there's a lot of wiring in this machine. Okay, like a lot of wiring. And there's a lot of thermal breakers in this. And what happens is, the thermal breakers get to the point where they don't want to work right, and so they just trip off. Well, that's not such a big deal if it's the coolant pump. So, okay, so the coolant quits running. So you got to stop, let it cool down, it'll kick back in. But, and I'm only saying this for anybody that would buy this late, if it, the, the thermal breaker kicks off the main power, and the spindle stops, and you're still in here, and you're not aware of what is going on, you realize it will come back on by itself, in gear, running wide open. So you gotta be super careful about that. But other than that, like I said, I've had this for about 13 years. It's been a really good lathe. Obviously, I've made some extremely accurate guns on it. It holds really good tolerances. I mean, other than those issues, would I buy it again? Well, here's the deal. If I had the money, I would buy a US, made in America lathe. But, I build guns, I don't have any money, right? So the thing is, it's a Chinese lathe. You know what, it's pretty good for what it is. So I don't know whether that's an endorsement or not. If you have the money, buy something totally awesome. But for what it is, it's been pretty good. And I have a jet mill, and again, this is not a video about this. I have a jet mill, jet mill, I've had no problems with it. Really, nothing. And that over there is a surface grinder that's made in Taiwan, not in China. By the way, this, this jet is made in Taiwan also. Same deal, that surface grinder, no problem. My disc and belt sander, that's a jet. Pretty much no problems with any of my other equipment. This lathe has given me the, the, the most problems, but at the same time, it's been a really good lathe. So, I guess that's it. If you want hats, you want shirts, I guess the best thing to do, until we get something up on our website that just says click here, and you gotta realize we're computer illiterate, I don't know if we'll be, have a live website where you can just click on something and buy it. Just call us, email me. You know, if you want one, I'll put it in a box and send it to you. So, we made a bore guide. This is a 6.5 Creedmoor. It's finished, haven't shot it yet. It's probably gonna shoot awesome if you want it, call me up. All right, thanks a lot.